Yes. Uh -huh. well, yep. Right, I'm going to write Wang.
Good morning, everyone. That's a bit better now. As you may have noticed, we have a few technical difficulties this morning with those screens. So as the, as the saying in Belfast talk, we're going to wing it this morning. Back to the old days without technology. So I hope you remember the, hymn, the, the words, the, the hymns that are picked this morning. I'm sure Rosemary will prompt as well. Next week's service, again held at 11 a.m. by the Reverend Allen. There's a service tonight in Knock Methodist at 7 p.m. It's an affirmation service for local preachers. So that's a, a Knock Methodist church tonight at 7 p.m. You're very welcome if you can make it along. Unfortunately, we have to announce the, the death of Cynthia Knott, who died on Sunday past. Her funeral will be held here in Glenburn tomorrow at 2 p.m. So that's tomorrow, 2 p.m., Cynthia Knott's funeral. And uh, please remember her sister Pamela and the extended family. The East Belfast Methodist Bible Studies are starting up again, beginning on the 18th and 19th of September. Uh, they're going to explore a journey through the Bible for migrants and our, to our response from today. So it's the East Belfast Bible Study. They're Wednesday mornings at 10.30 a.m. in Bloomfield Methodist Church, Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. in the Donald Methodist Church, and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. So it's Wednesday morning at Bloomfield Methodist Wednesday evening to Donald Memphis, starting on the 18th of September and on the 19th of September via Zoom. And you're all welcome to join on that. We continue, we're halfway through our 30 Days of Scripture Prayer Challenge. So for the month of September, and the church is open every night between half seven and eight o'clock, and you're welcome to come along and take a silent time to pray of prayer for our community and any other issues that we may have. And finally, the storehouse for September is tea bags of 80 or less. Thank you. Don't we love technical terms? We're going to wing it today and we're going to enjoy the service. I just want to do a wee update what I feel God has been saying to me over this past week in our wee scripture reading. So this is just me. I think God's been telling me to do things this week. Monday was be filled with the Holy Spirit. Tuesday, don't slander, be peaceable, be considerate and be humble. Wednesday was another, do something, be careful by how you live. Thursday, we're full of joy, rejoice and be gentle. And then Friday, Alan, be kind, be joyful, pray and be thankful. And then yesterday, we get the weekend off, but we don't. Rejoice, bless people around you, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony and don't be conceited. I have to look up the dictionary to see what don't be conceited means, and don't be proud. Which brings us to today. May the words of our mouth be pleasing unto God. We're doing this morning's service without any technology. We've got our microphones, but we've no PowerPoint. We've no hymns coming up on the, the screen. So before we get into it, we'll have to get down to serious business first. It's actually Julie Nellis is preaching next week, so I can have a rib at her. She's preaching next week. She's not here. And it's her birthday next week as well, just in case she forgets to tell you. And she'll give her a pack of sweeties in. Are there any birthdays in the house? My troublemakers? No? I'll go into the snake pit. Oh, Alex, you can keep nothing secret. yo -ho. Thank you. We Fredo frog. All right, man? A Harry Bow man. Just talk among yourselves there. Well, that's the, they're the fizzy ones. I like those too. Charlie. What do you say? My buttons are limited. Here you are. Rosemary, you're going to be working hard today. I'll point the other ones if you want both. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, happy birthday, Bobby. Oh, good choice, Alicia. I shall come over here. Anything to celebrate in the middle? Man United scored a couple of goals yesterday, I heard, and uh, I'm just saying that.
Oh, good choice, good choice. Anything to celebrate here? Oh. Have to visit down to the cheap seats to do we fly past. Anything to celebrate here? No? Birthday next week. Next week. I'll on you next time. Susan, is it your birthday next week? Oh, yeah, right. Hey, I know you. Hey, I'm staying quiet. Thank you. I'll take up the house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know you like the caramel ones. I want to read that passage of scripture for, for today's reading. We're on day 15, and it's Psalm 19, verse 14. This is what it says. May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Now, this is where we're starting to get a bit dodgy. We're going to add lip here. Rosemary, what are we singing? Yeah. Oh, you, do you want to do it? Oh, you can do that. Oh, come on ahead, guys. All age worship. All age worship, guys. You're not getting the morning off. Uh, you know who you are.
Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence this morning, sometimes the world lets us down with its technology. But Lord, we know in our hearts we don't need anything else but you in our lives. And we thank you for everything that you provide for us, for those nice things, those commodities about us that we just take for granted every day. We thank you for your word that we have the freedom to read. We thank you for the fellowship of each other in this church. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus, your son, who sacrificed himself for us. Lord, we thank you for the gift of eternal life and all the promises that we can find in your word. But Lord, we admit that we are human. We say and do things that push us away from you. Sometimes you ask us to do things and we just ignore you. But Lord, you've made provision for that as well. You allow us to come into your presence and confess our sins. And so we would do that right now in the silence of this prayer. We would confess everything that we know to be wrong, uh, those habits that we think are just habits. But Lord, we need to confess those as well. Father God, you know us, you know how we tick, and you know the things that we think nobody else knows about. But Lord, your word tells us that if we confess our sins, you hear them, you forgive us, and you keep no record of our wrongdoing. Lord, hear all of our prayers this morning. We pray for our friends, our families, the the community in which we live. For we ask it in Jesus' name, who taught us to say as a family, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Right, this is my PowerPoint here. I've been really excited about this morning. I'm going to do a card trick for you. And it's called Taking the Easy Way Out. So I'm just showing this here to... So these are my cards. I need an assistant. Would I, would I have a volunteer from the, the younger, one of the younger people in our church? <laughs> Want ahead, Kim? <laughs> oh, Bobby's beat you to the post. So these are my cards. I googled this morning, does anyone know how many days it is until Christmas? 101 days before the red guy with a beard turns up. Do you know who that is, Bobby? An elf. An elf on a shelf. And these are, it's got me pictures on the other side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to amaze you this morning. You're going to go out. Who is that man? He's even doing magic tricks during the service. So what I want to do, I'm going to shuffle the deck here. And Bobby, I'm going to ask you to pick a card, and I don't want to see it, but I want you to show it to this group, the guys in the middle, and the guys over here, but don't tell me what it is. And then I'm going to get you to put it back in the deck somewhere, and this is where I do my magic. I'll be going like this, click on my fingers, and your card will be sitting on the top of this deck. Is that going to amaze you, or what? Okay, do you want to have a go? I'll give it an extra wee shuffle here, so. 
What are you guys laughing at over there? Bobby, pick a card, don't show me. Now, just to make this more interesting, I'm going to stand over here and look into the corner so you, you can show these guys, but don't tell me what it is, don't show me. And just tell me whenever you have it done. The guys on the internet will be given out. You can't see him. What's he doing standing over there? Okay. So, I'm not going to look. You put it back in the deck, anywhere you like. Right, you're happy enough that I didn't see where he put that, okay? This is where the magic comes in, all right? Is that your card? No. What do you mean it's not your card? I've been practicing this all week. That's your card, isn't it? All right, we'll do it again. I'll give it a wee shuffle. Pick a card. I'll go and stand up here, show them again. Okay. Anywhere, anywhere you like. Right. Just hold on, check my notes here. <laughs> right. I have to do it twice. Right. You're going to be amazed this time. Is that your card there? It's upside down. Is that your card? What do you mean, no? Was that the card he showed you? You're a tough crowd, on a minute. Bobby, just stand there a wee minute, I read. Right. Bobby, go and have a wee seat a minute. I did that bit, and I did that bit. And there's a wee bit in the middle there, and then it jumps to that. There's a wee bit in the middle that says, I should have done this, and I should have done that, and I should have done something else, but I didn't do it. I just went to the end where it did says, do that, and nothing happened. Do you know why I'm going over that wee story this morning? There's a passage in the Bible where Jesus started to talk to the disciples, and he goes, guys, I have to be mocked. I'm going to be arrested, I'm going to be beaten, I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to die, but I'm going to rise from the dead and three days later. And this is Peter, I love Peter to bits. Peter the disciple, who I keep on saying suffers from foot and mouth disease. When Peter heard that, no, no, that's not happening. This is what's happening, I'm going to... That's what you just said isn't going to happen. And the reason why I said about this wee story is about taking the easy way. Sometimes there's a wee bit in the middle we skip over and we go to the end and we go like that there. But that wee bit in the middle is the important bit. There's no shortcuts in our faith, in our walk with God here this morning. Rosemary, what are we going to sing? Yep. Majesty, worship his majesty. We're going to sing it through twice. Majesty, worship his majesty.
The Lord will now be received. I have to say that God is good because there was a one in four chance that I could have picked the card that Bobby picked. I was hoping it was going to be a Tommy Cooper moment for the right reason. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that you give us and we give them back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago, there was a wee challenge about the wee people to come up and tell us what you did over the summer? And last week, Oliver rose to the challenge. Michael didn't even have to bribe him or anything, but the challenge is still open. If anyone would like to come up to the front and tell us, how did God surprise you or do something with you over the summer? But Michael? Okay. As as many of you know, I I work in... uh safety and security at events uh, all over Ireland, all sorts of events, sporting events, political events, music events. In the summertime, when most people take a break from their work, it's my busiest time of the year. So when Alan asked what to do over the summer, I thought, well, I have plenty to, know that I, to say what I did. So over the summertime, it's especially busy with the outdoor music festival. This year, it started off for me in May time. I'm sure most of you have heard of Bruce Springsteen. He started playing outdoor concerts in May, he started in Belfast, Dublin, Cork and Kilkenny. And up, right up to two, all summer the, the, the music festivals continued, right to two weeks ago where a band called Coldplay played in Croke Park in Dublin for four nights. And the amount of people, you probably wouldn't guess how many people attended over four nights, but it was 328,000 people attended over four nights to see Coldplay in Dublin. So that's why I missed church over most of the summer months. In case some people are wondering where, where's he been. But I'm grateful to Dennis, because as usual, Dennis holds a fort and keeps things going. But working in events, for a while I struggled with the idea of working in the event industry, because it encourages, not, not, not encourages, but it opens, opens people to take excess alcohol and excess drugs and puts them in, in, in harm's way, possibly, depending on how they behave. So for a long time, I had to, had to try and... Uh, justify my mind why I was working there and the fact that I spent a lot of working on Sundays too, it gave me a bit of a dilemma. So I reconciled my doubts in, in two ways. Firstly, I thought to myself, if I'm not here working these events, they're going to go ahead anyway. So that was, that was the first big help. And out working at the events and I'm given an opportunity every weekend, every event to meet a large, large number of people from different walks of life. And secondly, the scripture helped me out there was two, two passages of scripture came to mind when I was trying to reconcile why I should be still working at events. The first one in Romans chapter 12, I'll read them out to you. It tells us, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. 
If it is to lead, then do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And the second passage in Scripture is Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So whether over the summertime or for the last few years, I, I've been simply helping an anxious person outside a concert who's lost their ticket or didn't know what way they were going or what gate to go into, or people who got separated from their friends, or even people who were incapacitated through drink or drugs, or they've been injured or they took sick, the list goes on of the problems people have. I treat it as a calling to be there and to make myself available to help people at the events, and I see it as a blessing. So that's where I spent my summer. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. The challenge is still open. I know it's hard to come up in front, but if you feel you're shaking, your hands are shaking, your knees are knocking, come up and tell us what you were doing or how God has blessed you over the summer. Uh, our scripture reading is uh, nice because you can't follow what I'm reading so if I make any mistakes you don't know because it's not up here. Our, our reading is from Mark chapter 8 and if you want to follow it it's on page 1012 in your pew bibles beginning to read at verse 27 to the end of the chapter. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross. And follow me, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Jackie began reading that wee passage of scripture with Jesus asking the disciples, who do people say I am? And then he makes it more personal and he says, who do you say I am? And Peter, my favorite disciple, foot and mouth disease, Peter, is the one who answers, you are the Christ or you are the Messiah. And most of us would agree with Peter's answer. 
But what does that answer truly mean? For Peter, it was a divine revelation that Jesus was the one who was going to bring peace and prosperity to the land and nation of Israel. But what does Jesus being the Messiah mean for our lives here this morning in Glenburn Methodist Church? What does Jesus being the, the Messiah mean for us regarding the choices that we have to make in this life? What does Jesus being the Messiah mean for us in regard to the lengths that we will go to spread and accept the truth of the gospel? For Jesus, it meant that he was to suffer many things. He was going to be arrested, beaten, mocked, crucified, and put into a tomb. But he said he would rise again on the third day. He would be rejected by the people and the religious authorities. He would be rejected by the, the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And because Jesus is the Messiah, he must be killed and rise again on the third day. Christianity, our faith, stands alone in the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. And even though our Peter declared that Jesus was the Messiah, he didn't really like the truth about what it meant. It meant blood, it meant pain, it meant suffering in the most awful ways. In the version of the Bible that uh, Jackie just read there, it says, Peter rebuked Jesus. He gave out to Jesus. I'm stopping short of saying he had to bake off him, but he gave out to Jesus. And this is what he said about to, when Jesus said, I am going to be arrested, I'm going to be mocked, I'm going to be beaten, I'm going to be crucified. And Peter's response to that, you can find it in Matthew, never, Lord, this shall never happen to you while I'm here. That's, that was my uh, translation of that. And straight away, Jesus rebukes Peter right back. Peter gives out to Jesus. And he says, get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the things of God, but only the things of men. The verse that I want us to look at this morning is actually verse 34. And it says this, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself. Take up their cross and follow me. I have to be totally honest with you this morning about this morning's service. For me, it's a difficult one to preach. And the reason why I say this is a difficult sermon, it has nothing to do with the words that, we, that Jackie just read for us. It has nothing to do with theology. It's not difficult to preach because it's hard to understand. The message is difficult because the message in it is actually very easy to understand. Today's message is about suffering, rejection, persecution, hardship, and even death. The great American evangelist Billy Graham said, salvation is free, but discipleship will cost you everything you have. In our reading this morning, Jesus confronts us with the truth with what the cost will be for anyone who chooses and wants to be one of his disciples. And it's not just saying, I'm a Christian and everything's going to be rosy in the garden. It's not. It will cost you, it will cost every Christian everything you have. Being a follower of Christ or disciple is the theme of this passage. And this is evident in what Jesus commands his disciples. Follow me, or in the NIV that Jackie read, it says, come after me. The term follow me or come after me is reserved for this subject of discipleship. 
It implies total commitment on the part of the believer to Jesus as Lord and Savior. William Booth, the founder of the Sally Ann, I was preaching in Bangor one Sunday evening during the summer in the Salvation Army Citadel. And I says, I was in the pulpit, and I said, it's great to be here in the Sally Ann. I says, I'm allowed to say that? And they went, no. And I said, it's a good job I didn't. <laughs> the founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth, was asked this question. What is the secret of your amazing Christian life? And William Booth gave this answer. I told the Lord that he could have all that there is of William Booth. To be a disciple of Christ, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. As Billy Graham said, it costs everything, everything that you have. Jesus led a life of self-denial, and as one of his disciples, we must deny ourselves. Self-denial means that uh, we submit everything to his control, all of our pleasures, all of our interests, all of our works, and all of our desires. I have to be honest, I try, I want to give all of my life to God, but there's a wee bit, there's a wee nimble, not point, not point, not, not percent, that's the wee bit that I want to hold on to. And God's saying to me, right, big man, come on. That's the most important bit. I want all of you. I need to surrender that we not point, not, not percent. Uh, no one else can do it for me. I have to do it myself. You can't do it for me. I have to do it myself. And it's a choice that I have to make and you have to make of your own free will one that you choose freely to take. And self-denial or taking up your cross is not just <clears throat> the denial of things. There's an American, uh, theolo an American teacher called Warren Wearsby. In one of his many books, he explained this very well. And he says, to deny yourself does not mean to deny things. It means to give yourself wholly to Christ and to share in his shame, his suffering, and his death. To take up the cross does not mean that you have to carry loads of burdens or you're, somebody gives you loads of problems to carry. To take up your cross means that you identify with Christ you identify with his rejection, his shame, and his suffering and his death. That's what he says. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In my mind, uh, it brings to the forefront this practice that we have uh, during Lent, where we, somebody will say, I'm going to give up eating Fredo frogs. Uh, I'm going to just start eating Haribo's during Lent. I'm going to stop eating chocolate. And what I'm trying to say here is we need to fully understand why we're giving something up, why we are denying ourselves. Because if I start off day one, I'm not going to eat any chocolate. I'm not going to eat any Fredo frogs to get away from me. And uh, at the end of 40 days and you haven't touched a drop of chocolate, you begin to focus on yourself. Oh, aren't I a good boy? I got 40 days there and I didn't touch any chocolate. We focus on the, the accomplishment of denying ourselves instead of the reason why we are denying ourselves. The Bible doesn't teach us how to deny ourselves or pick up our cross. That's all it says. Pick up your cross. To deny yourself or pick up your cross is really to turn away from ourselves for the sake of turning to God. When we turn and face God, 
and the concerns of God and the desires of God in this place, the love of God becomes the primary thing for us. So in the context of this scripture, you could ask yourself, what is the point of being alive if Jesus tells us to deny ourselves? There is only one reason why we should pick up our cross, and that is to make room for Jesus. You may have been a Christian for one year, 20 years, 40 years, and you could be sitting here this morning going, is there something missing with my faith? Is there something that I missed somewhere along the way? I've been a good boy, I've been a good girl, I'm obeying the rules, ticking the boxes, doing this, but there's something missing. If you have given something up, if you have denied yourself or you've picked up your cross, think of the reason why you have given something up. And every time you think about that, that something that you have given up, replace that thought with the thoughts of Christ. Just remember what Jesus gave up for us. Taking up your cross is a deliberate choice to take up a burden that we are under no compulsion to take up, except for trying to get closer to God. It's a deliberate choice to be involved with what God is calling us to do in this place. It means following Jesus. It means suffering for Jesus. It could mean danger. It could mean death. And it's a choice that we have to take upon ourselves the burden of others, putting ourselves out there without any reservation because of Christ. It is our choice to follow Christ wherever he may lead you, no matter what the cost is. When I went into Edge Hill College, I said a wee prayer to myself, Lord, in fact, Methodism, will you go where you're sent? Yes. I ended up in Bosnia three times with college. And I have to tell you, for the Bosnians are watching here this morning, they're as mad as us. I thought it was back home. The crack and the humor is exactly the same as us. But God will take you places. He'll surprise you. And if God calls you to do something, he will equip you with the tools that you need to do what he's called you to do. Dr. Luke, or the guy that wrote the book of Luke, and the book of Acts tells us that we are to pick up our cross daily. Think about where you are right now on your Christian journey and what is Jesus asking you to do? What is God convicting you of or calling you to do in this place? Is he calling you to, in a way he's calling me, I want that we not point not not one percent that you're holding back, big man. That's the important bit. Give it to me. I want you to give it to me freely. And we're still having a wee argument at the moment. I'm just stubborn. And I want to give it to him, but I don't. But I do want to give it to him. But it has to be my choice. It has to be your choice as well. Is he calling you to get involved in this church? And what exactly is the cross that Jesus is asking you, you to take up? And my comeback to that is, what's stopping you from doing it? Matthew 16, verse 25 says this, Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. And then it goes on to say this in verse 28. Come to me, this is Jesus calling all of us, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's what God is telling. That's his message for us today. The we not point not one percent. We're all guilty of it. I know that for a fact. We're all guilty of it. That's my wee bit, Lord. I want to hold on to it. God sent to me and he sent to you guys and the guys watching on the internet, 
that's the bit that God wants you to surrender. He wants you to do it of your own volition. He wants you to do it of your own free will. And you will be blessed. Let us pray. Father, there are many promises in your word. You tell us that you will never leave us nor forsake us, but help us, bring us to that point where we submit and surrender to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask Carol to come up with our prayers of intercession. Alan, this verse for today must have been very special because this is how I'm starting my prayers today. Let us pray. On this day, the 15th of September, we hear words from Psalm 19. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Heavenly Father, we pray today for all who preach your word, for all who teach your word, and for all who read your word. And we pray for those who work in Bible translation to bring God's word to remote areas of our world so that people can read the Bible for themselves. Loving God, we pray for the service in Knock Methodist Church this evening where local preachers will be affirmed in their calling to preach. We pray for our Methodist president, the Reverend John Alderdice, as he leads worship there tonight. A recent program on television reminds us to thank you, Lord, for pets who bring such pleasure to families and to individuals. And we pray especially today for those who train dogs to help many people who have a variety of disabilities, be they search dogs, therapy dogs, hearing dogs, and guide dogs. What a blessing they are. Merciful God, we look out on a world of chaos, protests, fighting, riots, wars, famines, floods and fires. We lift the peoples of your world to the throne of grace, knowing that you love all people in every nation and your purposes will be fulfilled. Loving God, we pray now for our church family here in Glenburn, praying for our friends who are ill at home those awaiting treatment and those receiving treatment for various medical conditions. We pray now for those mourning the loss of a loved one. May they know your comfort and peace surrounding them now and in the days ahead. Lord Jesus, as we continue our 30 days of prayer, May we be transformed to walk in your way and make you known to others. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Thank you, Carol. We're going to wing it again. and psalms in front of you. Could you pick it up and turn to page, our hymn number 705, and you will find the hymn called, Take My Life and Let It Be. <laughs> 